This session is VoIP Wars, Attack of the Cisco, Cisco Phones. And this is Fatih Ozavji. 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 <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks. Hi, uh, this is Fatih Ozavji, as you know. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, can you hear me that way? Okay, I, I try to keep that tone. If I will speak uh, louder, just warn me. We are staying. Okay, I will start anyway. I'm here for Voice over IP Wars Attack of the Cisco Phones presentation. I will refer to different events uh, on this presentation as well. First one is DEF CON. I had a presentation last year, Voice over IP Wars Return of the SIP. I explained SIP based attacks, session initiation protocol based attacks last year. So I will speak about SIP very less. I will speak about Cisco specific things. Uh, when I refer that presentation, it is available on the web. Also, it is available on Vpro's homepage as well. So you can check that presentation for further SIP attacks. Also, I will refer a second event, which is Black Hat Arsenal. Uh, I will have another presentation tomorrow afternoon and uh, Vpro will be on the stage, and Vpro reloaded, Vpro 2.0 uh, will be on the stage in a live environment. So basically, uh, I will show a few video demos. Uh, if you need live demos, uh, you can visit that boot, uh, and I can show these live demos on your request, and it will be very detailed, and I can show my source code as well. Um, I will open my source code now for a further question. I have two different tools. First one is vProxy, and second one is the major one, vPro. This is my source code environment, and I will talk about all of them. My name is Fatih Ozavji. I'm a security uh, consultant uh, at Sense of Security. Uh, I'm uh, there is an echo. Would you turn it off? Okay. Uh, I'm working for Sense of Security, and uh, they, they have uh, uh, they have really good support, uh, and uh, they support me many times. And uh, when I need, thanks for Jason Elston, uh, Chris Akhmandiritis, Nari Mohammed Salim, and all Sense of Security team. Also Hans Michael Warbeck as well, and. Um, I'm interested in about voice over IP, uh, also mobile applications. I have speak uh, on uh, a few Black Hat Arsenal events and uh, DEF CON and OSERT. Also, I'm author of Vpro voice over IP toolkit. It is a kind of penetration testing toolkit. So basically, we can use Vpro to attack voice over IP systems. It had only SIP based models last year, but now it has skinny based testing models. Furthermore, was solutions, web-based systems, testing models as well. Um, and we will talk about all of them. And if you want to see these attacks live, you can visit our booth uh, tomorrow afternoon at Blackett Arsenal. That's my agenda. I will talk about hosted voice over IP solutions. And after that, we will talk about network attacks to these hosted voice over IP environments, especially for Cisco-based environments. Our main vendors will be Cisco and WAS Solutions. And we will talk about attacking Cisco UCDM, which is Cisco Unified Communications Domain Manager, and also known as WAS Solutions Domain Manager. Also, we will attack regular Cisco Unified Communication Manager, Cisco UCM. It is a well-known product for all voice over IP environment, and we will attack different ways. Uh, and First one is attacking SIP-based services, and second one is attacking voice over IP clients, and the last one is anyone attacking skinny protocols. This is a basic host, uh, hosted voice over IP service environment. Hosted voice over IP service environment uh, is a multi-tenant environment. Tenants will be the customers. We are calling them tenants because they may have additional customers as well. They may have IP phones, mobile phones, soft phones, teleconference systems such as GoToMeeting or WebEx, 
and they will use this hosted voice over IP infrastructure. And this infrastructure is available here. First one is a sandbox environment for them. It is a very isolated environment and it provides voice over IP services for them. But the second environment is a shared services for all tenants. It is another environment and it is shared between all tenants. And uh, they have IP phone XML based services, client management, uh, service management, domain management. Furthermore, if they have landlines or cell phone lines, they have to use PBX based systems and they may be in shared environment as well. Furthermore, they may have a shared switch. What I am explaining all this infrastructure, because if you want to jailbreak this environment, your targets must be in the shared services environment, not for sandbox environment. If you want to target Cisco UCM, you will be in a sandbox environment. But if you want to target Cisco UCDM, domain manager, if you want to target IP phone services, you will be in a shared environment. If you have vulnerabilities, you can jailbreak the environment and attack other tenants. Here we go. Hosted voice over IP environment has many elements. And we have two vendors here. So it is pretty much the same for other vendors such as Avaya or um, other vendors, open source vendors, Asterix or FreeSwitch. Basically, we will talk about web services and which are in use for IP phone services, client management or services, or we will talk about voice over IP services which are available on SIP or Skinny services. Uh, we have also RTP services for media streaming and transferring, uh, and uh, we have regular landlines and connections. A tenant, because they may have additional customers, Voss is a company and they are a partner of Cisco also, uh, a kind of Cisco company, and uh, also Jason Ostrom calls it uh, voice over super sleek uh, at the first place, after that we change it. And yeah, if we want to analyze this network, we have to use a kind of discovery protocols. And we have different discovery methods. First of all, we can use regular network discoveries, we can use uh, unmap based discovery, or we can use voice over IP based discovery. We have different tools for them. But our focus must be understanding the environment. Our goals are finding the voice VLAN, understanding the design, uh, furthermore getting an access, a kind of access to this voice environment, a kind of PC or voice VLAN access. After that, getting voice over IP access on this environment. And main vendor, products in use, software versions, VLAN IDs, and getting a fully functional voice over IP client. They think this kind of hosted voice over IP environments are protected physically, but they are not. If a customer or tenant has a phone on the lobby, you can access this phone and it has a PC port behind. You can put your network cable, right? Furthermore, we can impersonate a person. I have tested a few voice over IP environments uh, at Turkey and Australia, and uh, actually uh, I was impersonate a, a, a kind of uh, maintenance guy at Turkey, and I had an access, a very uh, restricted environment. And I had a full access after that, a full unified communications environment. So basically you can use all of these attacks. But the thing is, you should have additional ways. If you have PC port, yes, it is good, but you may have no voice VLAN connection. At that point, you should initiate CDP-based attacks. VoIP Hopper, developed by JS Nostrum, uh, it may help you to get this kind of access, but it works on Linux. Uh, so uh, I use Mac at this stage, and um, I had another uh, tool, and I developed it uh, for CDP discovery, and uh, this tool will be available on vPro. And this module provides raw CDP spoofing or sniffing features. So you can 
initiate any um, CDP ID, uh, any form or uh, vendor ID on your CDP requests. Furthermore, we have DTP-based attacks, ARP-based attacks, and uh, we need a persistent access. We need these attacks to get a persistent access, yes, but we need to keep it. That's why we need to tamper the phone, or we need, we need to tamper another device. That's why we talk about Tapberry Pi. Tapberry Pi is basically a Cisco IP phone, and this Cisco IP phone, uh, the model number is 7940. I disassembled it, and um, the big red box is another small card on the phone, and it provides a connection using this interface, the white one. And it has three different, inter uh, four different interfaces, uh, one for AC power or DC power, and uh, the first one is auxiliary port, the middle one is RJ45 Ethernet connection, and the third one is RJ45 for PC port. So, uh, when I reverse it and unplug it, I see pins of the Ethernet connection. After that, I patched it with a regular network cable, and I have a cloned Ethernet connection. If this phone will be in voice VLAN, I will be as well. But I need a persistent power source, right? Power over Ethernet provides a kind of electricity uh, for us, but it is not sufficient to uh, support IP phone and Raspberry Pi at, for, uh, at the same connection. I, will, I still work uh, on it. Uh, I'm still working on it. But the thing is, we may have additional power sources here because it has speaker phone as well, and speakers need power source, right? So basically, we can use it. Uh, we have issues as well, voltage difference, uh, and uh, it may be triggered on, uh, uh, on the physical interface of the phone. Uh, also, we can put a slimmer battery inside it. I tried a few batteries. Um, they, they do not fit. However, I saw uh, another slimmer uh, battery at uh, Los Angeles, so basically I will buy uh, this uh, battery on my uh, return trip, and I will try it, and I will share this process on my blog as well. Uh, also, you will have network connections, and you will have TFTP and DHCP services. You can attack directly to the TFTP server. You can get configuration files of the system, and you will have very good resources. Protocols, vendors, software versions, Sometimes you may have usernames, passwords, or secure shell configuration. But you can be the voice over IP server, or you can be the TFTP server, or you can be the anything. First of all, you should disable the ACP server. Using the ACP snooping attacks, you can be the TFTP server. You can initiate a fake DHCP. You can assign your TFTP server through this DHCP offers. After that, you can send fake configurations. You can set yourself as a Cisco Unified Communication Server for SIP and SCINI services. After that, you can support your backend with the real server, and you can obtain all the information, or you can intercept all communication. Also, you can deploy secure shell case uh, and enable secure shell service on the phones to get full access on the phones. Uh, and maybe you can find it interesting. Um, two guys uh, provided additional uh, content on Cisco IP phones, and uh, they have presented last year RSA conference, and uh, they talked about uh, physical attacks on the Cisco IP phones. So you can find it easily and you can add additional software-based attacks after your access. But this is not the case. We are talking about hosted environment, right? We should talk about hosted collaboration suite. Cisco has a hosted collaboration suite, and this suite, basically, Cisco and what solutions products. First of all, domain manager. It has IP phone XML services for IP phones, which are call forwarding, voicemail accounts, speed dial access. Self-care for 
users of tenants to manage their phones and connections, and tenant services management for all tenants, managing their own services. And the administrators must be a part of this tenant environment. Also, they have different level of administrators. So if they call you a location administrator, you will be nothing, only a user. You will be administrator, yes, but almost nothing. So you should escalate your privileges, right? We'll talk about it later. Also, we will have unified communication measure here, and we will have regular communication measure vulnerabilities. And there is an advisory here, and this security advisory published at uh, 3 July or 2 July, uh, depends on the time. Uh, and 3 July, it is, um, when it's published, uh, first of all, uh, uh, it contains our vulnerabilities, uh, two of uh, the critical vulnerabilities. And uh, I surprised and uh, I was happy, but uh, it doesn't take long because um, we have another vulnerability here and it was a very popular vulnerability because Cisco team uh, discovered that Cisco Unified Communication Domain Manager has hard-coded secure shell keys. Okay, and uh, I try to get the software uh, from everywhere, but uh, Cisco Unified Communication Domain Manager is a very uh, expensive product, so you cannot take it uh, easily. Uh, so I couldn't find the secure shell keys. However, my other vulnerabilities, Cisco IP phone based vulnerabilities, will be available on this advisory, uh, and uh, you can find this advisory uh, and for further details. Uh, by the way, uh, the interesting thing is, this advisory says that these vulnerabilities are unpatched and the patch will be released September because I will publish these vulnerabilities here. Um, that's why they publish these vulnerabilities, of course, uh, and still no patch for them. So basically you should migrate your services to Cisco UCM environment or you should just wait. That's why I will keep uh, my specific exploits uh, for me, <laughs> for now, uh, until September. Uh, but I will show the vulnerabilities, I will show the demo, so you can use your own exploits, uh, you can develop it easily, and we'll talk about it later. First of all, we should talk about self-care. Self-care is a web application for uh, the users of tenants. So they can use many features, so it has cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, and they are stored ones. So basically, you can change your name, or surname, or middle name. You can change the environment, so basically corporate telephone directory will be changed permanently. So they can redirect any user to a malicious page, which has persistent cross-site scripting. Furthermore, domain manager. Domain manager um, in a shared environment, right? So if you want to uh, bypass it, or if you find a vulnerability on it, uh, you can jump other tenants and uh, other environments as well. It provides tenant administration interface, user management interface, location or dial plan management, and uh, CLI management, number translation features. So we find, uh, sorry, we found many user enumeration techniques and vulnerabilities. We have many privilege escalation vulnerabilities. Uh, we have a few cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, and uh, we have potential SQL injections and uh, SOAP uh, manipulations, and we'll talk about it. User enumeration is very basic. You can use your device name or username on EMA applet or other environments, or as you see, you can initiate SQL injection or SOAP-based attacks uh, on the server. Actually, the trigger is here. Insecure file upload issues. You can send a custom file to initiate an error or your attack. After that, you will have that error message, a kind of SOAP error message. Furthermore, it has SQL error messages as well. So it says that something is wrong at the SQL backend. I had only limited days on this environment, only five days. <laughs> That's why uh, I did not try SQL injection too much. But Cisco patched the vulnerability and they said that it is not uh, an SQL injection. 
it is basically a, an error and uh, they have detailed error pages. So basically they disable the error. So if you believe them, you can uh, rest or if you do not believe them, you can try. It is available on Insecure File Upload. Uh, and I believe them, that's why I, I'm uh, having this conversation. Anyway, uh, you can use other attacks to using this bulk upload tools and other ones. Uh, also, it may leak uh, the file paths, for example, uh, slash server was shared environment, etc. Furthermore, we can escalate our privilege uh, position. So we can be a privileged administrator or we can be the main administrator of the tenant as well. Uh, we have two different points here. First one is mode user. We can modify a user, okay? But we can change its role as administrator. <laughs> so basically, a user will be administrator. Furthermore, we have add user form. When you call this add user form, you will have user adding features. When you call with user type administrator, you will have administrative uh, adding console. So basically, you will add an administrator with full privileges. Uh, furthermore, if you have number translation, you can manipulate this number translation. You can delete current number translations. So we can compromise all this environment to call ourselves. It is possible as well. Um, by the way, we are still talking about shared environment, right? So you can use these all attacks against other tenants if you have correct privileges. And we have IP phone XMR services. You can use Cisco products to support your Cisco IP phones, right? Because you need additional access for voicemail, your custom applications such as uh, renting a movie through an IP phone on a hotel, for example. This is a custom application. So you should support your IP phone with custom applications. You need a service and this is the answer was solutions provide an IP uh, phone XML service for it and Cisco and WAS uh, family, uh, they use it in this hosted environment and it is a shared environment. So basically, it is developed on a specific language and it is very private and you cannot debug this language as well because it is a binary language. Uh, this is why I prepared a tool. Um, this language is, of course, XML, and it is hard to decode, as you know. You cannot develop uh, your tool based on XML, and you cannot read XML, right? That's why I prepared another tool, but probably you cannot read and you cannot write XML files. That's why I will explain the vulnerability. You can call this link, and the red one's service name, ID of the device, and action. So, ID of the device. It is important because you need MAC address of the phones, right? You can initiate an ARP scan attack to collect all MAC addresses. After that, you can initiate this attack in a loop. After that, you can initiate all these services, which are speed dials, change pin, voicemail access, show, call forwarding. And sample functions are call forward all, or call forward on busy and this is the hard to decode environment. And if you see a binary XML file just like it, you probably, you cannot read it now, uh, I see. That's why I prepared a tool <laughs> for it. And uh, it is hard to decode as you see. Uh, and you can call these links and you can follow these in instructions to exploit. Uh, and I prepared it, uh, two tools for you. First one is redirecting a specific phone or all phones of all tenants to a specific number. Or you can update their all speed dials of all tenants with a specific or malicious number. And as you see, it is easy. And you can call these links using your browser and it is easy to exploit. However, you should follow a few steps. That's why I developed these tools. And this is my tool and it is a demo here. Uh, remember that Cisco Unified Communication Domain Manager is a very, very expensive product. That's why I cannot provide a live demo here, right? Uh, I developed a custom tool which mimics Cisco Unified Communication Domain Manager. So basically, we have a fake backend. 
<laughs> on this server. So basically, my tool will exploit a fake backend. It is not a Cisco product, but this exploit will work with your Cisco products. And here is the demo. And uh, it must be started. Why it is not started? Yeah, here we go. And uh, yeah, call forwarding is a module. So basically, we can use call forwarding module uh, to manipulate a phone. We need MAC address and we need IP address of the server. And we can find this server easily. We can uh, initiate an ARP scan for it, this attack. And we can set our action info to get this phone is forwarded or not, basically getting an information. Furthermore, we can initiate other attacks. In this case, as you see, display name is the extension 91104 and fint number. Fint number is full uh, internal number and it is fixed. You will change the display name and this phone will be redirected, okay? So basically this attack is action is forward and when you forward to James Bond, it will be successfully. And the backend is, as I said, it's a fake service. We are not hacking Cisco now. But you can use the same tool in the same environment with the same parameters, and you can hack as well. And uh, furthermore, we have another tool here. And this tool can manipulate speed dial access. You know, your IP phones uh, have speed dial numbers at the right corner, right top corner, and you can dial all of them. But the thing is, we can update or we can manipulate all of them. First of all, we can collect these numbers. If you are related with intelligence agencies, they like to get address book instead of the communication because address book uh, provides a kind of spider map of the communication, right? That's why you can get speed dials. They are basically address book of these IP phones. And you can use list, modify, add or delete functions. And as I said, it is XML-based service. You can use it just like uh, a browser client. And this is a list of a phone. And pole position is Jane. And second one, jo uh, uh, John. And fourth one is Joe. And I will add another one in the position three to the position three. And this name will be Vipro. And the number two will be a full number. And these are our options. And when we run it, it will be added to the third position. Also, uh, we can manipulate specific numbers as well. It is added. When we change action to list, we'll see it. See, it's on the third position. We can delete or manipulate all of them, but I will pass this video because we have many things to talk, okay? You can see this live attack tomorrow afternoon. We can, uh, you can visit Black Hat Arsenal for code. Actually, I can show this code now, uh, maybe here. Um, I should move it. To that space. Here we go. Um, I need a big font, right? A kind of bigger font. View, active editor. Font size must be bigger. Yeah, I couldn't find that one. You can see that code tomorrow if you cannot see now. Um, it is basically providing a fake service. And as you see, it is XML. And it provides same functions for these phones. These ones, numbers for call forwarding, these ones, speed dials. And it's a fake service and it provides this XML content. So basically you can understand the attack or the remote server easily tomorrow. 
and we will talk about unified communications now, we have additional attacks against basically IP telephone servers. Uh, and IP telephone servers may have different sign link methods or uh, media transferring methods, such as SIP and SCINI for sign link, RTP for media transferring and transporting. Uh, Cisco UCM is not a refrigerator. It's a kind of product, but it is based on Linux. So you can exploit this product based just like a, as a regular Linux. It has web-based management interfaces. It has voice over IP features. So if you fuzz these services, you will have Linux access. That's all. And discovering these servers, yeah, we should use Vpro's discovery features to find SIP servers and which methods are available on this SIP service or which methods or features available on the skinny servers. That's why we can use our features. Also, uh, Vpro will have WAS modules, uh, which I presented two slides uh, before. And uh, we have additional discovery things, and we can use Nmap or other tools to discover. But we have additional attack surfaces. Uh, we have SIP attacks. I will not talk too much about SIP, because I talked last year. But I will talk about specific SIP attacks. These are regular attacks, uh, regular ones, discovering the service, getting an access, and uh, attacking the SIP service. Or we can use advanced ones, for example, SIP trust relationship hacking, SIP uh, proxy bounce attack, and the other ones, for example, voicemail attacks. But we should know that Cisco specific SIP services may have limited authentication, such as MAC based authentication. That's why we should know MAC address of the device, type of device, and extension of device. We don't need a password. But as you know, three of them, they are public. If you see a device, you will have all this communication environment, right? Cisco helps you as well. Cisco has, uh, Cisco UCM has different error messages for all errors. So basically you can enumerate a phone, a MAC address, a line, or a user easily. Here is an attack, basic register and subscribe attack. We will send register or subscribe and we'll see a response and we will create an attack based on response. We will have invite CDRM billing tests using invite attacks. We will have invite spoofing on Vpro models. We will have C proxy bounce attack as well. And we can convince the remote server we are still having a conversation, but it will try it, uh, to, it will try to access to the remote servers to have a communication. Uh, that's why we can scan all of them. Also, we can send IP spoof messages to attack another one. It is possible. And we can get a basic SIP trust hacking to initiate a call. And we can send millions of packages, but we cannot say which one is accepted until we will have a call. If we have a call, and if we injected this IP address and port to the from field, we can learn the IP address and port which are trusted, uh, and we can initiate a call with a spoofed communication. But we will talk about Cisco, right? If you need further information about SIP attacks, you can find my DEF CON video, and you will see live demos about it. Uh, but if we attack Cisco, we should change a few things. First of all, Cisco UCM accepts MAC address as identity and it needs no authentication. If you have MAC address of the phone, you can, uh, you can authenticate uh, your phone or Vpro easily. And uh, it has, actually this environment may have additional rogue SIP gateways. Because the remote server will be protected and they need another gateway to patch this system for a PBX or another tenant. That's why they may have unauthenticated SIP gateways in the environment. So you should search other SIP services, not only SIP sign link, uh, major SIP sign link service. You should look for all routers and other gateways. And if you have one, you can initiate 
your calls through this server without authentication. Um, Cisco suggests that you should use secure deployment at this stage, um, and you can use secure deployment, which is certificate-based authentication or encrypted protocols, but it needs um, additional configuration and it has some uh, compatibility issues. We may talk it later, uh, and we have additional attacks, and I talked all of them last year, but I already published a well-known attack, and it is available here as well. Remote party ID is a well-known custom header to authenticate yourself as a different number. Cisco will know you, but Cisco will use another number as a source number in a call. So basically, it can trigger all toll frauds and other things. Also, it is in use for billing as well. So you can bypass billing, you can impersonate someone else, or you can send a spoofed caller ID during a regular communication. And Cisco says that it is available on all Cisco environments. It is available on the guide as well. When you inject this header, which is available on the slide, you will have a fake identity. But the thing is, your regular clients have no customization options to add a custom header, right? We'll talk about it later. Okay, how can we use this attack? We can spoof our caller ID, we can bypass billing. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, we have real world attacks, right? You can call someone else's voicemail box with his number to access without pain, right? So basically you can call all famous celebrity people to access their voicemails. And as you see, it is a well-known attack, but spoof card, it's a commercial service to provide public call spoofing. Who needs it? If you have a SIP server, you can use your fake identity as well. And we can send fake caller IDs on messages as well. We can send spoofed short message services messages, so basically SMS messages. And we can initiate many um, social engineering attacks on it. And here's a demo. We have a basic Cisco IP communicator on the left side in a VMware environment, and the right side, right corner, is Cisco Jabber on a Mac. And we have vPro at the bottom. And if they call each other, as you see, they should deliver their source numbers, right? So the numbers are 1004 and um, it must be 2000. I cannot see now. Yeah, 2001. So basically, we can use our voice over IP tool here and we can add this custom header. And this custom header is available as an option. Set remote party ID. And this is a regular call now. We did not set our header. And I will set our header now. Set remote party ID. For example, 001. You can use alphanumeric characters as well. It depends on the remote target. If it is an IP communicator, it will not accept alphanumeric characters, but the other clients will accept. As you see, it is a call from 1004, but the client has no idea. We can use all these attacks on a hosted environment, so they have voicemails, right? If they have voicemails, we can access as well. Furthermore, we have VoIP clients in this environment, so we can attack all of them. We may have a regular IP phone, client, an IP phone client, or we may have soft phones, we may have teleconference devices. Vulnerabilities may change by device to device, and we can use their default services. For example, management services. However, we have different targets here, and these are sample targets. Cisco Jabber clients, unified person communicator, IP phones, IP communicator. The thing is, we can have, uh, sorry, uh, we may have additional 
custom clients because Cisco provides a Jabber SDK for you. And this Jabber SDK contains different interfaces for all devices. We can attack all of them. How can we attack? We can be that in the middle. So we can change the environment. We can add some custom headers. We can manipulate all of them. We can add some additional things. But first of all, we should set them or we should believe them, uh, we should convince them we are the sign link server. We can use ARP attacks, DNS spoofing, VLAN hopping, or manual configuration to intercept this call or communication. After that, we can add some features. We can attack clients, we can attack servers, we can attack the communication inside the protocol. Uh, furthermore, we can create a malicious voice over IP client. Um, you will remember uh, what I said about clients. Clients have no remote party or custom authentication, right? Or custom, customization option. But we can add these options using our client. So basically, we can set a man in the middle proxy and we can add these headers. We need TCP and TLS supported proxy and this proxy must support custom certificates and this proxy must have logging feature and this proxy must have a duplication to different ports to uh, show the real communication to you in the real time. Also, it needs search and replace support as well, right? We have no tool like just, uh, just like that and I modified a tool uh, to add these features. EAM proxy is a proof of concept tool for Ruby developers and I modified it to add these features. It is uh, vProxy here. It is available on this uh, vProxy link. It will be available tomorrow. Uh, it is private repo now, but it will be a public repo tomorrow. And MITM proxy is another tool for this communication. MITM proxy uh, has these features but only for HTTP. We need SIP communication and binary protocols as well, such as Skinny. And we can use a V proxy. It has some issues about uh, um, for multi threads and a few communications. I will fix all of them, but it is available uh, on this link and it is uh, BSD licensed. So basically, you can use this tool to add these features. And uh, this is basic SMS phishing using SIP messages. And V pro has SIP message support as well. And I provide a malicious SIP request. And my remote target is not my local host, not my client. The remote host, the server. And my firm can be hack me operator. And my target will be my XLite client in this case, not Cisco client. I use XLite because it is available on this environment. I cannot access Cisco Unified Press and server because of the limitations and licensing features. Uh, but I use SIPSEX and FreeSwitch in this environment host setup, but it is common for all these hosted environments. You can replicate this attack. As you see, I can define message type and content because Vipro has these configuration options, and it depends on the client. As you see, we can send HTML or we can send cross-site scripting based attacks. And we can smash the client as well because it has fuzzing features, so we can uh, we can smash or exploit uh, the remote client, uh, Microsoft Link client. Am I saying Microsoft Link? Okay. Forget about it. Uh, we are talk talking about XLite, yeah. We are talking about XLite and we can uh, exploit all of them, uh, all clients, just like similar methods. So uh, we will have different attack vectors here. And we can use different bogus messages. We can change our from two fields or other contact fields because they will be delivered to the clients, to the other sides. So these servers will deliver some part of the communication between the malicious client and the server, which are from contact, from name, custom headers. But if you have message support, it will have add file transfer, change file transfer, share the screen, give an access on the screen. These are features on regular communication clients, right? For example, a Cisco Jabber environment or Microsoft Link environment for all voice over IP environments. 
Because of that, we can send a bogus message to the client. And I had a demo on my uh, last year's presentation, and I attacked Adore iPhone client, and I had no idea it is a public and well-known application for many environments. And uh, they patched this vulnerability immediately. So I accidentally published a zero day, and it patched immediately. Uh, it is uh, patched now, but it is basically injecting our headers to the, uh, our request, and our request will crash the remote client without user interaction. And you can exploit iPhone. Um, this is a basic demo here, and I will show a few samples in this demo. And uh, we can send different messages, bogus messages, fuzzing features, uh, or injected HTML, message, uh, HTML injected messages. So we can send all of them. So basically, we can test the remote client. We can, inter uh, we can mimic the conversation because we can impersonate the client. As you see, it is uh, 701 and 702, and we are in the communication, but they have no idea. And we don't need authentication here because we are sending remote party ID as an identity. Furthermore, as you see, x -Lite confused. The communication is HTML-based or plain text-based. And after that, it's, it turns HTML-based. It sends HTML-based communication. Also, we can change our HTML conversation to plain text again. We can fuzz message types. Message types are in use to add file transfer features or share screen features, right? If you want to transfer a JPEG file, you should, you should change message type to a JPEG. If the remote client has no support for JPEG, it may have bogus responses or memory corruptions. So basically, you can fuzz all clients. I show uh, a few fuzzing features of Vproy. Nobody uh, will be crashed in this demo, but they can be crashed. Uh, so it depends on your fuzzing skills. So Vproy has different fuzzing skills, so we can fuzz all of them. And this demo will be available tomorrow in a live environment or in a video. You can uh, visit us for further details. And the golden shot. We have skinny attacks. Skinny is a basic protocol. It is a binary protocol. And it has different versions, such as 17, 19, 20. It depends on the remote Cisco Unified Communication Server. So basically, we are talking about the binary protocol. It is in use on this environment, uh, and it is in use for regular Cisco IP phones. We can manipulate this traffic because it has no authentication. If you deploy secure uh, environments, such as digital uh, certificate-based authentication, you may have authentication. Otherwise, you will have no authentication. So basically, we can impersonate any phone with a MAC address. Furthermore, they have to set their phones, and they have to use auto-registration or bulk registrations. If it is still on, you can register your phones easily in this environment. Uh, furthermore, we can impersonate a phone. We can use our regular attacks, registering a phone, registering a malicious phone, Disconnect other phones, calling um, a phone from another phone, or uh, redirecting a phone. Yeah, they are easy. Easy attacks, if you have any idea about Skinny Protocol. Um, Skinny Protocol has a live environment just like it. And uh, it is in a very, very verbose mode. And it has many packages and many messages in this environment. So basically, if you want to register an IP phone, you should send, for example, 10 packages, and the server should send 10 or 12 packages to you, and after that, you will be connected, and uh, you will have additional functions. But until this, you will have nothing. When I search for Skinny, 
protocol. I found two different advisories. First one is Felix Linder, related with uh, Cisco UCM, and the second one is Cipera Viper Lab. When I search voice over IP, SIP, skinny, I always see this guy, Jason Ostrom. Uh, he's uh, obsessed uh, and uh, patient uh, with about voice over IP, but not only voice over IP. Uh, anyway, uh, he helped me too much uh, on this presentation. Uh, and uh, Sparrow Viper Lab published a vulnerability. Furthermore, IX voice SCCP test library is available. Furthermore, uh, UC Sniff has skinny support to understand um, communication to intercept and capture all of them. Uh, I heard Viper Lava has skin support, but it's a commercial product. So basically, we have no tool to test skinny protocol. That's why we need a new one. This is the protocol, and this is Wireshark. And a Wireshark can help us to understand this protocol. However, Wireshark supports 17 version, two, yeah, uh, two version uh, 17. If you have version 12, uh, sorry, a version 20 packages or 19 packages, um, some of them will be not addressed by Wireshark because they are new packages and methods. That's why I developed a library for you to attack all these skinny services. And as you see, it has many different response, uh, response types and it has a binary registration features. It is very easy to develop a custom model. If you use register just like here or call, you can impersonate a phone easily. If you want to set your custom phone or custom protocol or custom attack, for example, fuzzing a specific method, for example, set button template, if you want to fuzz it, you can fuzz it easily because all these functions are available in this method. So basically, you can clone all this comp content. After that, you can add your custom models. It is binary, yes, but I debug almost all traffic objects. And all after all, you have a communication. Good, it's a good thing. You have a client and you have a call reduction feature, good, but you need a fully functional client as well. That's why you need Cisco IP communicator, and you can set a custom device name or ID here, and you will be a part of this network easily. Here is the demo, and in this demo, I have two different virtual machines. First one has IP communicator, uh, and second one has another IP communicator. First one, 1001, also 2000 assigned to first one as well. And the second one, 1011. And uh, top, uh, top right, Cisco Unified Communication Administration Panel. So we can list all these clients in use, and I will impersonate any of them. And I'm selecting a specific MAC address here, and I will be that MAC address and the communication. I am setting a MAC address, and this MAC address, after that, remove server IP address, that's all. There is no authentication here. When we execute run, as you see, the first client will be disconnected. If you use this attack to older versions of Cisco UCM, it will be disconnected permanently, also, the skin service may be uh, down for a while. After that, we will have line information, such as this MAC address has 1001 and 2000. Furthermore, we can initiate other attacks here. For example, getting information, yes, but registering our phone, registering another phone, if it lets auto-registration, we can register ourselves. Furthermore, we have additional call features and call forwarding features. In this demo, we will call our second target, 
and uh, this second target will be called by the first one. When we execute it, it will be called by the first one, and the first one will be disconnected because this is a TCP communication, and the remote server says that there will be only one client with one single MAC address. And as you see, we will impersonate the first one. It, we, it is disconnected now, and we are connected. After that, we are calling our target, and we have a call. And we are the first one. If you want to fuzz Skinny, it is very easy, and this library uh, will help you too. But you should develop your fuzzer. If you have a crash, it is possible as well. You will have a Linux target. That's why I mentioned Cisco UCM is a Linux operating system. It is not a fridge. Okay, we have call forwarding feature as well. We can use target MAC addresses to redirect all calls to ourselves. In this example, I will redirect all this call. It is same, we use MAC address and it will be all right. If you want to redirect all phones, good news, we have MAC file support. If you use any ARP scanner, you will have a MAC address list. So you can execute your attacks against the MAC address list, redirect all of them, call all of them from a number, for example. We can use additional attacks, denial of service attacks. Registration by default has this denial of service attack. This is forward, and we are forwarding to a live client. First one will be forwarded to second one, which means 1001 will be available only for 1011 through the skinny protocol, not both protocol. As you see, we have numbers, and it is redirected. And if we wait, we'll see it is redirected uh, on the first client. When it will be connected, it will retrieve this information. I will not wait. If you want to see this demo, tomorrow Black at Arsenal session, we'll have live demos, and we'll have these conversations and videos. What we did, we explained hosted voice over IP environment, we attack network states, and we get persistent access, permanent access, and we attack domain manager to jailbreak all the system, and we have access for all tenants. Furthermore, we attacked voice over IP, IP telephony servers. What we have, compromised SIP server, compromised clients, compromised skin servers. What should you do to um, secure your environment? You should install all patches listed in here. And uh, CV IDs assigned by Cisco for us. It is all referred to us. And it is starting from uh, 3277 to 3283. Furthermore, it has uh, 2197 and uh, 3300. These are CVIDs, also Cisco has the private advisories for us, security notices. You can secure your design using secure deployment. You should change your design. If you have insecure applications or protocols, you should keep them in a sandbox, not share the environment. Yes, you can find all this information from vipro.com and you have a basic 15 minutes training video for Vipro features, and Vipro 2.0 will be available tomorrow uh, at Black Hat Arsenal session. Uh, I will wait for you uh, afternoon, and if you have questions, I'm waiting for you. Any question? Questions? No question? That way, yeah. Changing for? Call for warning, yeah. Yeah, 
uh, the question is, uh, if we forward the phone call, it will be available on the phone or not, and we, uh, the client or victim will see it or not. Yes, they will see for uh, Cisco IP phones, but for other clients, they cannot see if the client uh, has a support, uh, has no support. Um, it depends on client, but regular IP phones will show it. Uh, please increase your voice, I cannot hear. Um, I have used 10.5.1, uh, uh, and I have used 9.1.2, and all the older versions. So basically, all my attacks, available and uh, IP phone based XML attacks and remote party ID, they are zero days. There is no patch for them, and uh, there is no tool to exploit un unless we pro it. But if you want to uh, see live demos, tomorrow afternoon I will have. Any question? Yeah. Um, yeah, the question is, uh, Viproy can uh, attack multiple targets. The question, uh, uh, the answer is yes, Viproy has um, multiple features. So if you want to call uh, through different servers to a same number, it is possible, different environments. If you want to send your uh, compromised or bogus uh, SMS messages through different servers to a one single target, it is possible as well. Also, you can change our environment uh, through our uh, fuzzing features. So basically, Vipro has multiple features. Also, it is BSD licensed and Metasploit model, so basically you can create or customize for your attacks. Uh, I will not take no, uh, I will take no question, uh, and it is finished, right? So uh, if you have questions, uh, tomorrow afternoon, I will wait for you. Thank you.